much. It's really nice to be back. I was uh, Sister of the Month uh, last, last year, somewhere around this time. So a lot of people have kind of heard my spiel. Um, hasn't changed that much. But I thought um, I'd really talk about tonight. Uh, you know, it's the holiday season, and so we're all naturally stressed out. It's just kind of, and it's almost like we wear it like a badge of honor. It's kind of like a thing to say, what are you doing? I'm so busy. Oh my God, I'm so busy. Have you heard of, she's so busy. It's like, it's this thing we do now, and then we try to one-up each other with how busy we are versus somebody else. And um, I definitely fall into that narrative all the time, and have for the longest time. And about, I guess it was in August, a friend of mine who's a teacher who's not just a yoga teacher, but he's also a very successful architect and interior designer in Philadelphia. He said to me, he goes, you know, that's great that you're busy. And I was never, uh, no one's ever responded to me with that. It's usually like, you're so busy. Oh my God, I'm so busy too. Like that's the conversation. He's like, that's fantastic that you're so busy. He's like, that means you're abundant. And I thought about what he said when he said that. He's like, that means I'm abundant. He's like, yeah, you're prosperous and you're moving and you're growing and you're changing. And I was like, wow, like that was one of those crazy aha moments. And it reminded me that I'm always the author of my story. I'm always the author. Nobody else is. I can change that narrative with one word. So instead of, oh my God, I'm so busy, I'm like, you know what? I'm steady. I'm moving. I'm going forward. And it's a really great place to be. And it doesn't mean that things aren't happening, right? But it's a really great place to be. When I went to my very first yoga class, I was about, probably about 18, 19 years old. And it was in this woman's kitchen. And I didn't really know what I was doing. I mean, I knew about yoga. And like, I, you know, it was, you know, it was in my zeitgeist, but not really. I was living in Princeton, and I was a music major. So we were always stressed out because you're a music major, and you're very dramatic. And you just have lots going on. And there's this level of competition, and it's just... It sucks. Like, that's just what I'm going to say. I was probably at the shittiest place in my life. Um, pardon my French. I cuss. I'm going to just say it. I'm a yoga teacher who drinks martini and swears. So anyway, I went to this yoga class, and it was in this woman's kitchen. And it was the most intimidating thing, because I didn't know what I was doing. And I I'm, I'm, was literally, like, in a kitchen, like, on the floor in this woman's kitchen. And I'm rolling around, and my head is hitting the stove. And I was like, what? <laughs> is this? This is ridiculous. And, uh, and it was $11. I remember scraping up the money. It was $11 to go to the class. But when I left, I was like, okay, so when can I go back for the next class? It was, it was the coolest thing. It was like that one time where I was like, wow, it's quiet. It's still. And I don't know what I'm doing, but I, I'm going to just keep going and get better. So one of the, the, uh, the first thing I hear when I talk about yoga or meditation to people is they just tell me how they can't do it. Like it's, I can't, I can't meditate. Well, how often do you meditate? Well, I don't. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> you know, <laughs> when I was a personal trainer, everybody wanted to have arms like Madonna. Well, you're not going to have arms like Madonna unless you pick up the weights and start doing bicep curls. You're not going to change unless you put the work in. Meditation is a muscle. That's all it is. That's the big secret. We want to have all of these wonderful books. I mean, I have shelves of books on meditation. There are blogs written about meditation. Everybody's got the secret. I mean, the Mahasrishi Mahasyogi moved a culture. He's the one that the Beatles went and hung out with in India. Moved a culture with transcendental meditation. It's a muscle. All of you have it. Every single person in this room has that muscle. So when you say, I can't meditate, my reaction to you is, well, how often do you meditate? And usually the answer is, well, I don't. Okay, well, the muscle's never going to get strong if you don't exercise it. And it's the same thing with the yoga practice. People tell me all the time, I can't do yoga, I can't do yoga. Well, how often do you practice? I don't. Okay, oh, well, there you go. <laughs> I, and you know what's interesting is that I was the same person because when people would talk about exercise, and I was a personal trainer, and I was very into lifting weights, uh, folks would say, do you run? And I'd be like, oh, no, I don't run. Like, I don't run unless there's, like, a sale sign. <laughs> Did you say half off? Uh, so is that happy hour I hear? So, right. No, I don't run. And I guess about last year, I decided, well, I was like, 
well, you know why I don't run? Because I don't run. I don't do it. I don't do it. So I went to the gym and I got on the treadmill. I'm like, all right, let's just start walking, see how this goes. And I started to walk. I did that for about, I don't know, three or four weeks. And then that walk turned into, I'll say a trot. <laughs> I'll say a little trot. And now it is Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 20 minutes, I get in and I run. But it didn't start that way. And I don't run like 5Ks. Like, I don't, you know, I'm not doing the dip. I love Michelle. She's like, no, you're not doing that. <laughs> but um, she's like, no, Jeff, because I don't go outside. That's the other thing. I don't go outside. Um, because I always get a rash. As soon as I go outside, I catch something. And I always, I don't go in the nature. It's just not working for me. Um, so I go in and I do my 20 minutes. And it's, it's a muscle. And you know what? Some days it really stinks. It's really hard. And I, I just, I'm like, I just don't want to go. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. It's, there are a lot of other things that I want to do. But I say, all right, but I get to do this. I don't have to do it. I get to do this. I get to do this. My body is strong. I can get up and I can do this. So again, meditation is the same thing. It's, it's no different. We've built it up in our heads that to meditate, we have to be this perfect cloistered yogi on the mountaintop in that perfect lotus position and we're quiet. And that is like bullshit. <laughs> because when is your life quiet? Especially if you have children, you have a job, you have a husband, you have family. Who knows? You, everybody has stuff. Everybody has stuff um, to do. Meditation is about just taking, sitting back and looking at that stuff. It's the other concept of meditation that I like to squash right away. We think it's about tuning out. You know, like, I just want to tune out and just be really quiet and still. Well, that's not going to happen because stuff is happening all around you. Meditation is tuning back in. It's tuning into what's happening and not having an opinion about it. That's the hard part, right? It's being neutral. It's becoming the witness. My teacher, Mahan Rishi, not the Mahan Rishi Mahash Yogi, but a man named Mahan Rishi, um, he gives these beautiful lectures. So way back before we had social media and all of those wonderful things, what you would do in a yoga ashram was go to a satsang. And a satsang is where you sit with the teacher and they talk. They give a lecture. And it's question and answer. Now, through the beauty of Facebook, uh, my teacher, Mahan Rishi, does these over Facebook. And it's really fantastic. And right before, when I found that I was doing this event, I remember I looked, I'm like, where's that, that lecture that Maharishi gave about tuning in? And he talks about tuning in, it's a choice. It's a choice. You make the choice. When you sit in your car, you choose what radio station goes on. You choose what you listen to. You choose what you bring in. You choose to get up early and go run on that stupid treadmill, right? You choose to go to a yoga class, or you choose to lay in bed with your phone like this, which happens scroll through Facebook. You have choices. You make choices all day long. So you choose what you tune into. You choose what news you read. You choose music. You choose what food you eat. We make conscious choices all day long. So when I develop this, not really develop, when I talk about three-minute meditation, it's a choice to begin your day. And I always say to people, try to begin your day with the choice of tuning into you. Right? You tune into so many other things, but decide, make the choice to tune into you and your breath. It's the most basic element. Without your breath, you are nothing. I could take away your ability to see. You will be uncomfortable. You'll still be fine. I can take away your ability to hear. You will be uncomfortable. You will be fine. I can take away your ability to taste the food that you eat. You will be uncomfortable. You will still be fine. I can take away your ability to feel, to touch. You'll be uncomfortable, but you'll still be fine. If I take away your breath, you're dead. There's nothing left. It is the most important and vital energy force that we possess, and we forget about it because the body is so intuitive that it breathes for us all day long. You owe it to yourself. You owe it to your family. You owe it to anybody who you're responsible for to breathe and give it your attention for three minutes. Three minutes is a choice, and that's an easy one. It's not five. 
and then go to five. I'm not like the Maharishi Mahayogi who says 20, 20 minutes twice a day. It's three. And there is not a person in this room who cannot give themselves three minutes, right? You don't have to meditate. You get to meditate. You have to first start by making the choice and changing the narrative. So I started to talk about like how we are so addicted to these. So first let me ask you this. Is there anybody here who does not have a phone? Is there anybody here who didn't bring their phone with them? Good for you. <laughs> right. You forgot it, and you panicked when you realized that you didn't have your phone. Right? Right. So, right. So here's that phone. It's with us. It's a tool, right? And we can go on and on and on about how awful it is that we're addicted to our phones and how the millennials have, you know, they're addicted to their phones. And, yes, people are walking around like this and ignoring each other, and everybody's now just at the bus stop texting and da 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 But it's here. Right, it's here. You, you can't put it back in the bottle. It's here. So why not use it and make it a tool for meditation? It used to be when you would pick up Yoga Journal or what was the one uh, magazine that used to be around? I forget what it was called. I think it was called like Meditation Today. I don't think it's around anymore, but they would have these meditation timers and they were like just this little bell and it was a clock. It was literally an alarm clock for $79.99 that like made a ding. <laughs> that's, that's all it was. And I was like, oh, you got to get your Buddhist meditation timer. How could you possibly not have your Buddhist, you know, you need all the accoutrement. That's the great, you need all your fancy stuff to do, to breathe. So thank you, Steve Jobs for putting a timer, now where is it, damn iPhone, here it is, right on your iPhone. And I, forgive me if you have a droid, you'll have to figure it out. I don't, I, I don't know, I, I don't know, but it can't be that hard. And, thank you Steve Jobs, you also gave me chimes previously $79.99 in meditation today. So what you can do, all right, stop, is set this for three minutes. So mine's set for three minutes. So we set for three minutes. <coughs> then it's on your phone, because you're all taking your phone in the bathroom with you anyway. <laughs> Don't lie. So in the morning, sit on the edge of your tub, or maybe you have a big fancy bathroom and you have a chair in there. For me, it's the edge of my tub and pull out your phone, and don't go to Facebook, make the choice, don't go to Twitter, don't go to Instagram, don't go to email, don't go to whatever, and the first thing you do is you put it on airplane, so I know on, on an iPhone it's a little airplane button, and what that does is it stops anything from coming in. There's no text coming in that early in the morning that you need to see, and you're not going to do anything about it in three minutes anyway, so just let it go. And all I say is sit, close your eyes, and breathe. That's it. There's no technique. There's no, do I need to count? Do I need to do this? Do I need to have a mantra? Do I need to have this? All you do is sit for three minutes and breathe. And I say the bathroom because it's the one place where usually nobody will bug you. It might be your office. My mother said that she, when we were little, she's like, you always knew when I was in the bathroom. I would hear, Mom, you know. But where's that place in your home where you can close the door and just sit? Maybe it's your office. You know what, sometimes there have been times when it's my car, and I don't even have children. I just have a husband who I'm like, yakety, 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 yakety. I have to go sit in my car. I'm just, let's go. I'm going to sit three minutes before I do anything. And then you're starting from a place of neutrality. That's the other thing, a big misconception about meditation. We see all these pictures and memes on Facebook and social media, and when everybody's meditating, they're like, I'm free, I'm free. You know, they're dancing and they're in fields or they're by a brook that's like babbling. And there's, it's just the most, I see these things and I'm always like, what is this? Meditation is hard. You will stink at it for a long time. If you talk to Babaji in New York, he is 104 years old. The first thing he will say to you is, I am the worst meditator in the world. Because it's work. Again, it's a muscle. 
it's going to be hard. You're going to think about, you know, a tuna fish sandwich. What am I getting for dinner? Blah, blah, blah. You're going to, all these things are going to come into your head. I didn't do this this morning. Somebody lost their socks. I got to get gas. Like there's all these things that are going to pop into your head. You just come back to that breath. Just continue to breathe. It's being neutral. Because it happens you start thinking about, all right, I need that tuna fish sandwich, which means I have to go to Landis, which means I have to go here, which means, and you just go down the rabbit hole. And come back to your breath. Inhale. Exhale. It's simple. Inhale. Exhale. And it's unnerving. The reason why people don't stick with a yoga practice or a meditation practice is because it's unnerving to be that still. You now have to deal with the consequences of being yourself. And boy, does that stink. <laughs> boy, is that like, wow, that's a tough one. So I always say to people, I'm like, yeah, people love yoga for the first week. They love meditation for the first week. By the second week, they kind of like it. By the third week, they're ready to give up. They're ready to throw in the towel because now it's real. Stuff is real. You have to sit with the consequences of being you. And sometimes that's not easy. And that's okay. The, the, here's the good news. You don't have to fix it. You don't have to change it. You don't have to analyze it. You don't have to do anything to it. All you have to do is observe it and breathe. And once you get over the 40-day mark, in yoga we like to say it, 40 days takes that habit. Once you get over that 40-day mark, which is hard to get to. So many times in, in yoga we say if you stop one day, you've got to go all the way back to the first. So if you're good for 15 days and then you miss a day, nope, you got to start all over again. So you get through that 40 days. Once you get through that 40 days, you crave it. You understand that when I'm sitting there for my three minutes, and you don't have to say, well, I'm going to make it five minutes. Stop. No, you're not. Go sit for three minutes. And if you master that for 40 years, then move a little bit faster. It makes you curious about who you are. What's interesting is once you're curious about who you are, things start to drop off that were once so important and so <coughs> instrumental, or at least we thought they were. You start to see things in a much clearer way. The busyness turns into abundance, right? The busyness turns into, that's just, it's chatter. It's meaningless. It turns into something different. Relationships become more authentic. And you can't really describe it. It just starts to happen. Things become, I always say, brighter. It's one of the reasons why I named my yoga studio Shine. Because when you practice yoga, you feel brighter. Also, you can't say shine without smiling. That's my, that's my other reason. Um, so you say you just go shine. Uh, but you are brighter. It's what it does. I mean, if you have a choice to be happy or to be miserable, which would you choose? Well, you, would choose right? you would choose being happy, exactly. It's a choice. If you want to be happy every day, you have to wake up and be in a good mood. And that's hard to do. It's not easy. But if you give yourself your breath for three minutes, three lousy minutes, things start to change. It's really amazing. Like, I can't even begin to tell you how amazing it is. And you don't realize it. Just one day you're like, yeah, well, this is, you know, I'm in line at CVS and... This lady's writing a check. Who still writes a check at CVS? Where at one time I would want to throw my shampoo at her. Now I'm like, yeah, she's writing a check at CVS. I gotta say, I am the most un woo woo. Yeah, right. Fling! I'm the most un yogic yoga teacher you will ever meet because it's real life. Yoga is a practice for real life. If you think you are going to become this, like, throwback hippie with love beads dancing around <laughs> practicing yoga well good luck with that <laughs> good luck with that you won't get it over there at shine that's for sure it's real life this is real life you live a life where there are student you know parent teacher conferences where there is shopping to be done where there is family that's cool right we all have that there's nobody here who has a different story than that so you owe it to yourself to, especially this time of year, to give yourself that breath, right? Because like I said, I can take away your sight, I can take away your hearing, I can take away any of your senses, you will be uncomfortable. Even if I took away all five senses all at once, you'll be uncomfortable. If I take away your breath, 
you're done. You're done. And that's all the three minute meditation is really about, is bringing that awareness back to your breathing, right? Just feeling it, right? Letting your lungs fill. Before I became, as she said in my introduction, I was a voice major. That's what I thought I was gonna be an opera singer. So we were very concerned with breathing. I mean, literally I would have hour long classes dedicated to just breathing. <laughs> It was, I had a teacher that would make me lay on the floor and sing, and then she would yell at me in Israeli. It was like, very, <laughs> she was something. And she would say, Jesse, feel it on the floor, Jesse, feel it on the floor. And she'd stamp her feet. She was very little and she was very loud. And <laughs> she would say, feel it on the floor. And you would, you would lay there and she, until you could feel your lungs press down all the way to the floor, right, until you could feel that breath. And that's what your three-minute meditation is bringing you back to, feeling what it is like to take a breath inside of this amazing machine that we all get to live in for however long, right? We get this amazing vehicle to take us around this planet and make all of these choices and have all of these relationships and meet all of these people and eat really good food and have wine and go to Sisters You meetings. We have all of these opportunities and then you sometimes meet people and they, they're all, they're not, they're only in their head, right? Everybody's living here and we have this whole vehicle, right? We have this whole vehicle and we're living in the neck up because we let those thoughts consume us. My teacher, Mahan Rishi, when he also talks about tuning in, he also says this, and it's going to sound really mean, but it's really true. He'd say, Jessica, most of your thoughts are a waste of time. <laughs> Really? Yes. You're thinking about a tuna fish sandwich. Is that really doing you anything? You know, it's what drives you, but so much of it is really this waste of time. And he, I don't think he's coming from a place of meanness, but I think he is coming from a place of what is important, right? Your breath is important. If you're not breathing, you're not living. You're not having the full experience of what this body can do. And that was the, the best thing I ever got out of meditation was I became less in my headspace. Not that I don't go there like everybody else. I, everybody goes there. But I was able to have this experience of from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet, which is what I found on my mat in a physical yoga practice. But that small little meditation practice, which again is a muscle. And if you don't exercise it, it will not get strong. I mean, it's really that simple. If you don't meditate, well, then no, you can't meditate. If you, every day, you pick up that bicep and you, or bi that dumbbell and you curl the bicep, eventually it's going to get stronger. Some days it's easy. Some days it's really hard. Some days it feels like, oh, wow, that three minutes went so fast. And other days you're like, I want to look at my iPhone and only 26 seconds went by. And you feel like, oh, my God, it feels like 26 hours. What am I going to do? So, again... This is a tool, and it's a, it can be a positive tool. Let me look at my time. All right, so I want you to take out your phone, and we're going to set it up for tomorrow morning. So grab your phone, and I want you to set it for three minutes. There's a timer. Under. Right? And you're not going to turn yours on. I'm just going to ask you to set it up. We'll just turn mine on. And then you want to choose the sound, and make sure it's not like the frogs or like the ducks quacking, like give yourself the chimes or the little ding, whatever it is. Right, and set it for three minutes. There it is, see, just like that. Everybody's doing it, see? Everybody's doing it. Oh. Oh, right there, see where it says where timer ends? When timer ends. When timer ends, see chimes. Oh, okay. See that? Right, so it's, got it? Right, see, that would not be a good one, right? <laughs> that would not be a good one. All right, so now you're set. Do, like, fight song. Right, exactly. <laughs> Mine's going to, to Kanye. It's going to be the whole thing. It's a whole meditation thing. Exactly. For the thong song, it's going to be... <laughs> You don't make it do that. It is a good song. It's a good song. But no chimes. 
Right. So chimes or the bell or whatever you have. Okay. So now you're all set up for tomorrow morning. Okay. So wherever it is in your house and you don't have to have a meditation cushion, you don't have to have any equipment. This is the greatest thing. You can still be in your pajamas. You can be in your work clothes. Like I said, sometimes I've done this in my car because I know I can lock the doors and nobody will come in. And there's a seat warmer. <laughs> That's really nice. And there's a seat warmer. Right? <laughs> yeah, but you know what? That ship sailed. <laughs> That's what I always say. You know what? That ship sailed a long time ago. So if I can have everybody, if you can uncross your legs and get your feet on the floor. Those feet on the floor. Right? You are not stuck. You are a conduit. You are a conduit between earth and sky always. You are not stuck. You are a conduit between earth and sky. There is a magnet in this planet. That's not woo-woo yoga stuff. That's science. There's a magnet in this planet. It's what holds us in orbit. There is electricity above us in the atmosphere. That's not woo-woo yoga. That's science. You are between those two wonderful fields of energy. You are a conduit and you can channel it, but it's a muscle and you have to practice. So everybody, feet are on the floor. If you can, take your hands and place them flat on your table. It's for grounding, right? Right, so if I was gonna do this at home, when I sit on the edge of my tub, I always just put my hands on the edge of the tub. It might be. And I like to do grounding in the morning because usually that's when we are planning and strategizing our day, right? In the evening, if you choose to do this in the evening, you would place your palms up. That's for release and surrender. It's when you're letting go of everything. But first thing in the morning, our natural instinct is to strategize. Not plan, we already have the plan. It's the strategy, especially amongst women, because we, are, we have to strategize everything. How are we gonna move throughout the day? It's, it's almost a little bit more maniacal than planning. You know I'm right. So, <laughs> ground those hands. Don't grip, just let them be grounded. And then lightly close your eyes. Lightly close your eyes. And then first just take an inhale through the nose and exhale out the nose. And yes, if you have a cold, exhale out your mouth, right? We don't have to get this technical. All I want you to do is just experience your breath in real time. Right, and so I just started that timer, and that's what you would do at home. Maybe take one or two breaths and hit your timer. Come right back here and just experience your breath in real time. And if thoughts pop up, they pop up. You don't have to, you don't have to engage them. And just breathe in through your nose. Breathe out through your nose. And have that experience of this life force, maybe for the first time. And if those thoughts pop up, you don't have to do anything with them. Just bring yourself back. Inhale and exhale.
And upon hearing that chime, find a big inhale through your nose and just retain it. Three, two, one. And open your eyes. And you begin your day. And you can even feel the atmosphere in this room has changed. And that is that power. In yoga, we call your breath, we have a fancy word for it, it's called prana, which means life force. It also means breath, but essentially it means your life force. You get to, you don't have to, but you get to experience your life force every moment that you're on this planet. You get to experience it. So I'm asking you to choose, especially during the holiday season, to choose to give yourself three minutes of attention to that life force. And then just see what happens. You can journal about it. You can write about it. See what happens. That's all I'm asking. See what happens. Become curious about who you are and see what happens. So thank you so much for letting me speak with you today. And I wanted to open it up to questions if you had questions about yoga or meditation. Sure. So you said something that started in the day this <coughs> Yes. Now, at, if you choose at night to do this, yes. would you recommend at night to let things go and do the same thing? I'm sorry. At, yeah, well, no. We say in the morning to be grounded mm -hmm. so that you're starting grounded and, and ready to go. Okay. At night to flip your palms up to release everything that happened that and day. Do the same time yeah, same, yeah, three, three minutes. If you wanted to do twice a day, yes, you just pop your hands up. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, it's just, it's really, it's interesting that position, how much it works. <laughs> um, it would be great at the end of the day to Yes, all. yes. So oh. at night, you would put your hands open like that. In the morning, when you're strategizing, you're a little bit more speedy, you know, in the morning because you have a plan. You have to go somewhere, so you want to be grounded. But really, if you're speedy at night, like, you ever have one of those days where you can't really shut it off and you can't let it go? It's just not happening, whatever happened that day. Uh, when I teach uh, Shavasana across the street, I say, if you're feeling a little speedy, this is a grounding energy and this is a surrender energy. Questions, recipes, anything? <laughs> anything? Do you have any questions? You guys are good meditators then.